When I started YouTube, my videos were not the best. Hello, I'm BJ from CMB Cop, and welcome to the first episode. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> but now that I've been doing this for about three years, yay! Yeah, they're still pretty bad, but the point is, in that time, I've picked up a few tips here and there which you might find helpful or interesting or entertaining or something. Wait, although this video is intended vaguely for educational purposes, viewers are advised not to take any content in this video too seriously on Cambridge and not being a verified member of the Australian Insignificant YouTubers Association, authorised by the International Squids Anonymous Organisation Island. Now I know some of these tips may not apply to you. This isn't a how-to video, I'm simply just relating some of the things that I've learned that may help you as well, but if you really want to properly learn about how to improve your videos, then there are hundreds of people on the internet that are more qualified than me to teach you, so maybe this video isn't for you. Okay, enough chit-chat. 10 things that improved my YouTube videos in no particular order. Number one, edit aggressively. This is something I find all the time when I look back in my old videos, is how much useless footage I left in the video. There is so much that could have been cut out and it would have made the video more interesting and more engaging to watch. So that's something I've learned is cut out everything that's not necessary. Even if you have an amazing shot for a video that you were really excited about when you filmed it, if it doesn't fit, or if it's not necessary, or if it's just going to be boring to watch, just cut it out. Now I know I use a lot of jump cuts in my videos, that's just because I like the style, and also because it's easier to record when you're just saying little bits at a time, and then you cut them all together. I know this style doesn't really appeal to everyone, but I like it because it's fast, it's snappy, and it means the audience doesn't get too bored. I hope, anyway. Number two, keep it interesting. I think one of the biggest issues that my early videos had was that I would just ramble on for ages and I wouldn't really think about what I was saying. So as much as I can now, I try and think about what I'm saying, keep it tight and to the point and don't ramble on and, you know, be confident as well. Just make it interesting and enjoyable for the people to watch so they're not just sitting there going, why am I watching this? I find that a lot when I watch my old videos. Number three. Be spontaneous. Now don't get me wrong, planning is great and I think it's a really important thing when working on bigger projects, but sometimes you just want to throw caution to the wind and just film something. A lot of my favourite videos that I've ever made were ones that I just suddenly came up with this idea and decided to film without any prior planning or thought to it whatsoever. So sometimes it's good just to go with the flow and decide to film something and shoot it all in a day. Number four. Compromise. So I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so basically when I make a video I want it to be the absolute best that it can. And that's great because it means I'm always working to try and improve, but at the same time it also means that I can get stuck when something doesn't go really the way I wanted it to. Alright, let's 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 just let's just let's just hold it there for a second. I recorded this video almost six months ago and I didn't finish editing it because of that exact reason because I looked at the footage and got halfway through editing it and just decided that I wasn't happy with it somehow I don't... I, admit you. I think I just wasn't overly happy with the fact that I was making a video talking about how I've improved my own videos when, as we can clearly see here, I still got a lot to work on. And I just, I don't know, wasn't happy with the video somehow. So now, six months later, I just happened to remember this video and I was like, oh, I should take a look at that. And looking back through it now, it's actually not as bad as I remember it. So I probably will upload it, even though it's six months after I recorded it. So I guess, yeah, goes to show that definitely still learning all these things because that's a mistake I made with this video and it nearly didn't come out because of it. Okay, back to old me. So one of the things that I've had to kind of learn and I'm definitely still trying to learn is you need to compromise on some things sometimes. Particularly when you're working on other projects with other people, you need to be aware that you can't be in control of everything. So it's not gonna go perfectly, but you just need to do the best you can. Number five. Audio. I used to not be too worried about audio when I would be making my videos. I'd just hit record, whatever, and then just deal with the audio later and hope that it's not too bad. Honestly, I think audio is one of the most important things when it comes to making any kind of video. It doesn't matter if it's a short film or a vlog or a gaming video or anything. I think, I think audio is a very important thing if you want good quality in your videos, and I think it's one of the first things that people will notice if it's really bad. Number six. Camera equipment. So I really didn't want to put buying things on this list because I hate that. I hate saying you have to go out and buy a good camera, but let's be honest, having a good camera, having a good tripod, it helps. It really helps. It helps with the overall quality and production value of your videos. Right now I'm using 
all sorts of things. I've got my light there, I have a reflector which is not actually being used at the moment. I have a boom pole with my mic, I have my camera on my tripod, so I'm using a lot of equipment and I think it looks a lot better than if I was to use something like a GoPro like I did on the first video for this channel. Yeah, that looked pretty bad. But at the same time, a good camera and good equipment is only ever going to improve the quality of your videos. Doesn't matter how good the video looks, if the concept and the execution is badly done, it's still gonna be a bad video. So yes, buying my new camera definitely improved the quality of my videos. I'm not gonna lie, I love this camera, it's beautiful, but that's not the only thing that I've had to work at to improve my videos. Number seven, make videos from your heart. Something that I've struggled with a bit is making videos that I think other people are gonna watch, and I've eventually came to the conclusion that I need to make videos that I really care about, on subjects that I really find interesting and that I wanna share with people. So for instance, for this video, I wanna share my love of filmmaking, and I wanna share the things that I've learnt throughout that process. Or my comedy videos, I make them because I thought of something funny and I want to make that and then share it with other people to entertain them and make them laugh. I've made so many videos over the years that I have just scrapped because I just didn't feel it, it just didn't feel right, it didn't feel like it was working and it didn't feel like it was something I cared about enough to see through to the end. Stop! Yeah! Number eight, have supportive people around you. I don't know if this really counts as a filmmaking tip, but I find it's really helpful when I have people around me that like my videos and really are very supportive of what I do. And it kind of then completes the cycle for me because, you know, I've wanted to share this with someone, then I share it with them and then they say, you know, they enjoyed it. And so it makes it more interesting for me. And it also makes you strive to want to be better because, you know, you're sharing it with these people and they're saying, you know, this is really good and you want to make it better for them kind of thing. So I find having supportive people around you really helps. Like I show every single one of my videos to my parents and my friends and it's just, I don't know, it's really good to watch your videos with other people as well. It also kind of helps you figure out what was wrong with it and what you might be able to do better next time. Number nine, watch your own videos. I can't say how many times watching my own videos back once I've finished editing them has helped me so much. The number of mistakes that I make and things that I should have cut out or things that I forgot to add in that I notice when I go back and watch my videos, it's insane. I started doing this after I once made a video and I had a section of video of me not talking and I didn't realize until it was uploaded on YouTube. So now whenever I'm editing a video, I always make a habit of watching it through the sections that I've already edited and then watching it through from the beginning multiple times before I do the final render. This just, I find, helps to make the video better in general and it means that you miss any mistakes you make. It seems like a really simple thing, but it's very easy to forget and if I can watch the video through for the 10th time from the beginning and still enjoy it and not be thoroughly bored with it, then the audience isn't likely to get bored either. Number 10, practice and be critical. As per the age old saying, practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the better you're gonna get. I think by far the biggest thing that's helped me with my YouTube is simply doing it for three years and growing and being critical of myself and going, hey, you know what, that video wasn't great, so when I do my next one, you know, what, what, what went wrong with that and how could I fix it for the next one? It's okay to change your style and to have different interests. I think that's how you develop what you really love to do. For example, for the first almost year that I was doing YouTube, I made almost exclusively gaming videos and I haven't made a single gaming video this year because I'm just not interested in doing that anymore. So my interests have changed and I think that has sparked a whole new line of creativity and I've improved because of it. Well, that's all I have for you. I think my videos have improved a bit since I started, but I'm still no expert and there are still a ton of things that I could improve on. These are just some tips that I've picked up thus far. So please don't take this as a definitive guide for making better YouTube videos because it's not. I don't pretend to have all the answers and there are a million things that I still have to learn. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Just a wait, come, come here. Nah. I'm gonna stuff back. Hello, Hello everybody, everybody. it's BJ from CNB Cop here and welcome back to <laughs> yeah.